few announcements this morning. Uh, again, if anyone would like to help with recording, we would appreciate some additional help uh, just so that we can be sure we'll have coverage. Uh, we, in our prayers, we remember uh, Trinity Lutheran Church in Friedheim, which is celebrating its 170th, 75th anniversary. And uh, if you would like to donate some do uh, diapers and wipes to help out with families for Lutheran Family and Children's Services, we're going to have a representative from LFCS here on Father's Day. And it would be a nice thing we could just send those along with them to help out those families. So there is a box in the entry area if you'd like to drop them. Continue with our opening hymn, Lord Jesus Christ be present now, it is number 902. Renew us and lead us. 
so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. I will sing of steadfast love and justice. To you, O Lord, I will make music. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing of steadfast love and justice. To you, O Lord, I will make music. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
us not without consolation, but send us the Spirit of truth, whom you promise from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for the seventh Sunday of Easter is recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 1. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about a hundred and twenty, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and share in this ministry. With the reward he got for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong. His body burst open and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language a keldama, which means field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, May his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is recorded by the Apostle Peter in his first letter, portions of chapters 4 and 5. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed, for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or thief or any other kind of criminal or even a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So that those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time, 
Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in singing the Alleluia verse. I invite you to please stand.
If you answer all these three questions with the word prayer, you're correct. In the 17th chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus prays for himself, for his disciples and friends, and for all people of every time and place. The passage is often called Jesus' high priestly prayer. It's the longest recorded prayer that our Lord ever offered. He offers this prayer just before his betrayal, trials, sentencing, and death. It's called his high priestly prayer because for the most part it's an intercessory prayer. It's a prayer that he's offering up for other people. Even though Jesus knows he's going to suffer and die very soon, his primary concern remains for his disciples and for the future of the church. Prayer offers another proof of our Savior's all-embracing love for us and his desire to carry out his mission, no matter what it might cost him personally. In Act 5, Scene 5, of Shakespeare's Macbeth, the character of Macbeth has heard that the queen is dead, and he knows that his death is imminent. At this time, he delivers his famous soliloquy. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow, creeps in this petty face from day to day to the last syllable of recorded time, and all our yesterdays have lighted fools the way to dusty death. Out, out, green candle, life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets. Um, uh, in, that struts and frets his hour upon the stage. And then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Movies have been created around the theme of the search for the meaning of life since they were first made. You may have watched Thelma and Louise, who decided life to be lived in female drudgery had no purpose, so they drive off their, their convertible over a cliff. Star Wars seeks to go where no one has gone before, to find the basis of good, to do bad with evil. This is our question once we're forced to face our own mortality, whenever that occurs. What is the meaning of life? What makes my life have some significance once it's over? My life is only a brief blip on the map of time. Will it have made any difference? What is eternal life anyway? What is heaven? What is hell? How can I know the difference? In today's text, these questions are addressed as Jesus parting words to his disciples. <clears throat> Father, you granted your Son authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Eternal life is about relationship. Relationship with God. Relationship with Jesus. Relationship with one another lived out in Christian law. Eternal life is not by and by when I die, but it begins now and lasts forever. I see eternal life, eternal life at the Lord's Supper, and 
and look into the face of people with their uplifted hands, waiting to receive Jesus' body and blood with great awe and expectation. I see eternal life. When I sit with a person at their deathbed and watch a person whose body has failed and who the medical world can no longer help, whose life is coming to a quick end, and yet they're at peace. They've lived in a relationship with God and know Jesus as their Lord, and that step across the threshold from the world to beyond causes them no fear. I see eternal life when I help the poor and hungry so that they don't feel poor and hungry. It feels right, and I know Jesus' words are spoken to me as you did it to one of the least of these. You did it also to me. I see eternal life when people understand they're accepted by God. They're not worthless. They're worthy of being loved. And they realize Jesus has lifted the weight of, the, of grief and shame from them and freed them. I see eternal life when I'm using the gifts God has given me. And I realize that what they allow me to do is not worthless. Many of you have dealt with difficult times in your lives, whether illness, loss, or disappointment. Your ability to make life as it comes with peace comes from a relationship with God. People without faith watch people with faith handle the ups and downs of life. But they don't understand. In life, we see God at work. I see this most often at funerals because we know God and the love He shares with us through Jesus. We're able to look beyond the present difficulty with hope. Jesus provides us with meaning that doesn't end with death, but it flows on into eternity. <clears throat> we also know what it is to get caught up with the questions pertaining to life and its meaning. We live in that constant tension between what's urgent and what's truly important. In life, we make choices all the time. Even when we fail to make a choice, we make a choice. It's a choice to take the time to nurture our relationship with God, to allow God to be a part of our lives, to receive that love He intends for us. We need to take that time to allow our relationship to grow and to be nurtured. Time for prayer and worship like we're doing right now. As a church, we need to make choices that allow people to be touched by God. Too often we put God in a box by trying to explain how God works in the world. Well, God doesn't always act as we think God ought to act. And I'm thankful for that. We need to allow the encounters with God that can grow into a relationship that gives life and hope. We need to expect God to be active in the world, to see God active in our lives through the relationship with God that allows us not only to survive the ups and downs of life, but to grow through them. To experience eternal life, God needs to have His way with us. After all, as one writer has put it, as Christians, we know some faces. Number one, there is God. Number two, you are not God, and neither am I. And though we're created by God, we're somehow not in harmony with God and one another. Number three, Jesus is God, and demonstrated God's ultimate love for people. Number four, somehow, 
through Jesus' birth, life, love, teaching, death, resurrection, and ascension, we can have a right relationship with God and with each other, both now and forever. So, what is the meaning of life? What is eternal life? The answer is being in relationship with God. We find life when we give it away. We find love as we consider those around us before ourselves. We glorify God when we participate in the love of God for others. The secret that all writers are looking for, that movie producers seek to capture, that we all desire for our lives is found in a relationship with God through Jesus. Jesus won eternal life for everyone. What he won for everyone has value, though, only to those who believe and live in him. As Jesus prayed, Father, you have granted your spirit authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. We have eternal life as we live in this relationship, as we store up treasures in heaven, like forgiveness, joy, comfort, life, peace, faith, hope, and love, all of which are gifts to us from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, won for us at the cross, and guaranteed by His resurrection. Amen. Now may the peace and love of our God that passes beyond our understanding guard hearts and minds of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. We join in our hymn of response, Thine forever God of love that is number 687.
sound forth the trumpet of salvation and proclaim the triumph of our King. Acknowledging that the tomb is empty and our Lord is risen, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Loving Father, protect and defend your church from every attack of the devil who bows and seeks to devour. Where he counts, strengthen your people to resist his seductions and terrors. Where he gains a foothold with false teaching or ungodly women, call to repentance and holiness. And where he incites enemies against your word and church, preserve your saints in the faith, that they may rejoice to share the sufferings of Jesus. As the first Christians devoted themselves to prayer and worship, following Jesus' glorious ascension, preserve us in the same until we are raised with all the saints to your heavenly kingdom. We thank you today for preserving Trinity Luther Church Freedom during these past 175 years to continue to bless and enable them to proclaim your truth, which lasts forever. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Lord Jesus, you have pledged to us your spirit and promised to supply your church with pastors who will preach and teach your word. Bless the work of our missionaries, including the Herbers, Herlins, Casaros, and Aaron McKenzie. Raise up those who will serve your church in generations to come that we may never be without the aid of those to serve us in your name. Bring forth your harvest from the seeds they sow. Give us ears to hear and hearts to believe your word. Support those who endure fiery trials for your name. As they shine the light of the gospel in the hostile darkness, guard them at the sign of your cross. Let them rejoice in tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril or sword, that they share in the very same sufferings that you suffered for us all. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Lord God, ruler of all, thank you for your gift of marriage, blessed husbands and wives, including Bonnie and Marilyn, and lead them to live in faithfulness to their marriage vows. Protect them and all married couples from the power of the evil one, and pour out the fullness of your spirit on their lives. You hold the might of man in your hand and can destroy all things by your mighty power. Bless our nation and all the peoples of the world. Where war and violence threaten, bring peace and justice. Where oppression reigns, bring liberty. With your holy angels, watch over those who defend us, especially the men and women of our armed forces, including Hunter and Addison, and those who protect within our own communities. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Merciful Father, you have saved us by your grace. We pray for the sick the distressed, those whose hearts are heavy, those whose lives are burdened, those who mourn and all who are in any need, including Eden, Roy, Alice, Alice, Brad, Diane, Paul, Pam, Carolyn, Debbie, Reverend Herbert, Kevin, Jeremiah, Danny, Brian, Dan, Randy, Loretta, Earl, Carolyn, Larry. All affected by warfare and disaster and all whom we now mention to you in our hearts. Give them healing according to your good will and strength, and also mercy according to their needs, and the peace that passes all understanding. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Holy Father, you are the source of all wisdom and knowledge. Bless those who teach, those who learn, and especially those who graduate this year, including Faith and Joe. Be the hope of those whose plans have been disappointed, and grant that all graduates would find good employment. 